All right, hey everyone, Zach Schiffer here, and I wanna share with you our 51-step Klaviyo audit that we do for every single brand that we speak with. So, a little bit of background here, I've audited dozens of D2C e-commerce brands Klaviyo accounts, and this is exactly what I'm looking for when I'm telling them where they can add revenue to their retention marketing. This has helped us generate hundreds of thousands of dollars per month in new revenue for our clients. And I can guarantee that you're absolutely making some of these mistakes with your email marketing. So we are not holding back whatsoever. This is a little bit what about what the audit actually looks like. So as I said, it is very comprehensive, it has about 51 individual questions that we really ask ourselves saying, hey, is this part of your retention marketing optimized? So that's what it looks like there. And again, we're gonna go over the basics, retention marketing strategy as a whole. Then we're gonna go over your email capture system. So how, you know, when people are landing on the site, how are we converting them to an email list subscriber? Then we're gonna go over your automated flows, your email campaigns, which are kind of like your newsletters, as well as list health, as well as SMS, as well as optimizing your testing and ongoing strategy from there. All right, so for the basics, we really wanna make sure that first metrics are all firing off. So for example, when someone abandons a cart, we wanna make sure that we're getting that notification. Or if someone checks out, or if they just look at the site, we wanna make sure that all these metrics are firing off. Second, we wanna make sure that when people are added to the newsletter, they're actually getting correctly added to that list. It's gonna be huge for our welcome series. It's such a big revenue driver, and we need to make sure that it's completely optimized and people are getting added to that list correctly. Is Shopify integrated with Klaviyo? So uh, that's very important whether you're using Shopify or BigCommerce or WooCommerce, we wanna make sure that these two are talking to each other and sending data to each other as well. Attribution, that's gonna be huge, especially with subscription brands. I know there's a lot of issues around there. So there's a lot of different workarounds and things that you can do to really fix this with Klaviyo, but we need to make sure front and center, are we attributing revenue correctly? Customers, we wanna look at zero-time customers versus one-time customers versus two-time customers versus multi-time customers. We need to know that split because a brand that is just you know repeat purchasers and that's just has a very loyal following and not bringing in a lot of new traffic is gonna be very different than a brand that brings in a lot of new traffic on the front end, but doesn't have a lot of people that actually stick around. That's gonna be a huge issue and it's really what we see a lot of brands struggle with. In terms of important numbers, average order value, customer lifetime value, and repeat purchase rates. These go hand in hand with just knowing your data and knowing exactly, you know, is your brand a lot of consumables? Is there gonna be high repeat purchase rates? Or is it gonna be like a furniture brand where, you know, you're not gonna buy, you know, $20,000 worth of furniture necessarily. So uh, how often are results checked and used for improvements, as well as how frequently are reports reviewed and acted upon, as well as A-B tests, are these well-documented? This is huge for our team. We really wanna know what the biggest hitting offers are and what messaging and what angles are really resonating with the audience so that when, for example, Black Friday, Cyber Monday comes around, we already know, we're already locked and loaded. Here are the best offers. Here's the best way to, say, introduce plain text emails alongside design emails. We really wanna make sure all these variables are extremely dialed in before things, you know, big events come up and we really wanna have that well-documented and very clearly laid out. Consistency between the email content and landing pages. We need to make sure that everything's on point in terms of the design and the messaging, but as well as the offers. You know, a lot of times I've seen, uh, especially like smaller brands that don't have a huge team behind them, they'll have, you know, one offer on the landing page, but then in their emails, they haven't updated the offer. It's a huge mistake. So may maybe they, change it to a 15% offer on landing page and the pop-up, but then you get to the email and it's only 10%. And that's very, very annoying as a customer and you definitely don't wanna be doing that. All right, so retention strategy as a whole. Number one, we wanna see how much revenue is coming from email and SMS as a channel. Generally, we like to aim for about 30%. It's gonna depend based on how much you're spending on paid ads versus how many of your purchases are coming from repeat customers. But we really wanna make sure that this is as much as possible. Flows versus campaigns. At the high end, it might be like a 70, 30 split between campaigns, about 70% of your revenue coming in from there. And then flows might be about 30%. Again, it's gonna vary, but if we've seen really, really dialed in campaigns, again, that 70, 30 split between campaigns and flows is what we like to aim for. VIP, referral, subscription, and loyalty programs. If there are ways that we can add in benefits to these and really entice people to join them and refer people and subscribe, we definitely wanna add them in, especially if they don't cost you any margin. 
Sight conversion, that's gonna be huge. It's a huge bottleneck if your site is not converting well and people are getting annoyed because you have a bunch of pop-ups and a bunch of stuff you don't want on there as well as dedicated product landing pages, especially important for things like supplements where they solve a very acute issue. You can really dial it in and increase your conversion rate just with a really, really nice, uh, well done landing page. Promotions and discounting. We wanna make sure that these are not overdone. We don't wanna to send too many discounts. I know a lot of brands are very fear fearful of devaluing their brand with too many promotions. So we wanna make sure that they're not being sent out to the same group too many times as well as competitors. We wanna make sure that we're gaining insights, we're understanding what's resonating with the market so that we can go above and beyond. We do this especially well with our team just because we do work with so many brands at once. We understand what's resonating within the market. All right, so with your email capture system, this is really gonna be everything on your site that converts people from just visiting the site into being an email list subscriber. So it's mainly gonna be your pop-up. There's gonna be a couple other forms and ways that people can get on the list. So uh, looking at the pop-up, we wanna make sure overall it's converting as well as possible. We wanna make sure that things like designs and offers and messaging is very clear and it's being split tested because a lot of times it's just the very simple tweaks that can make all the difference and uh, really just split testing those tiny little things and having multiple iterations of your pop-up is gonna be huge to get the highest conversion rates, especially just because your pop-up leads to your welcome series and your welcome series is by far gonna be your best performing flow. It's all on autopilot, so this is gonna be really your number one thing to split test. What we like to do is typically split it up between mobile, versus desktop, as well as separate pop-ups for people with SMS or people without SMS. So it ends up being about four different pop-ups that we're gonna be split testing. It's gonna be a lot, but it's a very crucial part of getting people onto the list, as well as multiple touch points. So we wanna make sure that people are you know, really having the chance to get on the list via the footer, via the checkout. We wanna make sure that the pop-up might go to a little corner, a little spot in the corner so that, hey, they can click it again if they miss the pop-up, as well as the blog. We wanna make sure there's multiple ways that they can get onto the list and that they know about all the promotions and great things that you guys have on the list. All right, quick break here. If you're running the marketing for an e-commerce DTC brand and you want help adding 20 to 50% to your monthly recurring revenue, check out our website to get a custom game plan to do so. 100% free of charge. It's gonna be the first link in the description. All right, with email campaigns. First up is frequency. So we don't wanna to send too many emails and annoy the customer base, and we don't wanna to send too little emails and make them forget about us and leave revenue on the table. Next up is deliverability. So we wanna always be landing in the main folder, not in the spam folder. There's a lot that goes into this. I'm not gonna get into all the details. It's for another separate video, but uh, yeah, we wanna make sure that deliverability is on point. Huge, huge for email campaigns. Uh, different segments. We want to make sure we're sending to the right segment. So, you know, if you have a list of only, say, a thousand people, we don't want to be over segmenting and really taking making these tiny little segments. It's really just not worth it. Uh, it's going to be very different from a brand that has, you say, 200,000 people on their list. We really want to go deeper into the segmentation. That's why I say based on list size. And we really want to pick out those segments that uh, we can send different versions of the same email to copy. We want this to be short, punchy, and really sell the product without just being, you know, overtly annoying and salesy, basically, uh, as well as subject line and preview text. Again, we want that to be short, punchy, sell the open and really get people, you know, intrigued and open a loop in their mind. Creatives and design. We want to make sure that it's mobile and conversion optimized as well as really showing off the product, especially if it's like a fashion and apparel brand or a jewelry brand or a furniture brand or something like that where people really care about the aesthetics of their products. Open click and conversion rates. Really everything else that we talked about is going to go into these metrics. There's a lot you can get into there, but we just want to look at you know, these, these rates here and compare them to peers in a very similar industry is something that we're especially able to do just because we have so much data. We work with so many brands that we can really see what is working, what is resonating and where can we get these rates up to. And then value versus promotion based. Generally we like to do about 70% value based and 30% promotion based or even 20% promotion based. Again, you don't want to be a sellout and sell, uh, you know, give people too many discounts that really just undervalues your brand. 
plain text versus design emails. We do a lot of designed emails. However, every now and then adding in a nice plain text email is gonna be a great way to really stand out in the inbox, especially around times like Black Friday and Cyber Monday where everybody's just getting bombarded with emails left and right. And then finally here, we wanna make sure that the time zones that we're sending in are correct. So especially for brands that have global audiences, we do a lot of sending in the recipient's time zone. So that way, you know, you're not getting an email at like midnight, for example, and you're, people like that are just never really going to open that as frequently. All right, so with the flows, number one here, how well are the emails structured? One tip here is really just to make sure in your hero header, which is that first fold of the email, the first thing that you see in the email, you wanna make sure that your CTA and everything important around the email is all within that one spot. Are we sending enough emails? A lot of times we see issues with say in your welcome series, the welcome series is performing great, but there's only two emails in it. That's gonna be a huge issue. A lot of times we like to just increase the number of emails within those flows, whether it's abandoned card emails, we might you know increase it from one up to like three or four, or as I said with the welcome series, it could go up to like six, seven, eight, or even 10 emails in there if it's converting well and people are opening the emails and enjoying them and loving them. We wanna increase that number of emails within those flows. And then looking at the customer journey, we wanna make sure we're not missing any key flows just because these flows are really representing certain timeframes within the customer journey. So of course your welcome series is gonna be the introduction to the brand. You might have your VIP flow is when that customer turns into a VIP and post-purchase everything. We wanna make sure that there's really no stones unturned in terms of these events within the customer lifecycle. Conversions, it really goes into copy, messaging, design, everything about the email. We wanna make sure that it's on point with the brand and that there's no low hanging fruit that we're seeing across these emails. As well as flows that are performing below what we expect. So say looking at an abandoned cart email, that's gonna be normally one of your highest revenue drivers, but if it's like your 12th best performing email, that's gonna be a huge issue and we know that there's something going on that really shouldn't be and we need to look a lot more under the hood there. And then uh, feedback emails being sent post-purchase and throughout other other stages really in the life cycle. This is really interesting. It's some of those emails that say, hey, uh, reply, this back, reply back to this email and give us some honest feedback about this, that, and the other, and we'll send you a discount or uh, you'll talk directly to the founder or whatever it is. Uh, we really wanna hear directly from your customers what they like, what they don't like, and it's just really great all around for your DTC brand. And then finally here we have smart sending. So generally, we wanna turn this off for your flows. I'm not gonna get into all the reasons here, but basically uh, we still wanna make sure that customers are not being emailed too frequently. So we could have two flows that really overlap. We don't wanna do that. So for example, that could be the uh, post-purchase win back flow as well as the post-purchase uh, repurchase reminder email. A lot of times if you're not careful, you'll send the emails at the same time. The customer gets annoyed, no bueno. Next up is list health. This is gonna be very important, especially for deliverability as we talked about. So active list cleaning processes in place. It's very easy to do this in Clavio. Generally I like to do this you know, every month or every quarter, but basically just taking CSV list, exporting that, and then uh, actually taking out those profiles that are unengaged is gonna be huge. So it's just looking at metrics like bounces and spam complaints. We wanna make sure that people are enjoying the emails and they can easily unsubscribe. As well as we wanna make sure that people are giving us good emails and not just putting in random ones. Um, and so we wanna make sure the offers and everything are on point, especially with things like our welcome series. And then engagement, again, it goes back to looking at the audience and deciding you know, how many people are just window shoppers and looking for a discount versus how many people are multi-time buyers and VIPs and things like that. And then we have SMS. So this is something that it's very simple to do. Uh, we really incorporate it into the flows uh, for people who do have uh, SMS enabled and who do give us their numbers. We incorporate that into the flows. So as the campaigns, we wanna send them out, not too fre frequently just cause it's annoying to get texts and everybody reads their texts. So uh, it's very easy for, to get a lot of unsubscribes with this if you're sending too many. Uh, but really that's why we, we, why we like to look at the unsubscribes and make sure we're not sending too many emails. As well as we wanna make sure that you're Copy is short to the point, and a lot of times we really just like to do that for those bigger discounts and promotions so that when people open up open up their texts, it's a good feeling when they, hey, I get 20% off or 15% off or whatever it is. All right, and last we have ongoing testing and optimization. So something I see a lot of brands doing is 
A-B testing flows that really just do not need to be A-B tested at the moment. So they might be testing their VIP flow, for example, when that only gets 300 people per month versus their welcome series that gets 30,000 people per month or something like that. So you wanna focus on things like your welcome series, your abandonment flows, your pop-ups, split test those, get those dialed in way before everything else that doesn't get bring in as much revenue. And then really looking at copy, angles, promotions, and digging into your past data. A lot of brands just really like to spray and pray and just see what the campaign does and never note down you know, what the A-B test result was and they forget about it. And so just a, kind of a big nightmare. So that's where our team really comes in and helps you and gives you a very clear approach to split testing and finding the best copy and angles and really those insights that you can use not only in your email marketing, but in your paid ads, your landing pages and everything across the board. All right, and that's it. Just a quick reminder here, if you're running the marketing for an e-commerce D2C brand and you want help adding 20 to 50% to your monthly revenue without relying on agencies that overpromise and underdeliver, make sure to check out our website to get a custom game plan, especially to help you do so. It's 100% free of charge. It's gonna be the first link in the description. Next up, make sure to subscribe if you wanna learn how to scale your e-commerce brand's retention marketing revenue. And then now you know all about how to do a full audit of your Klaviyo accounts. You're gonna to wanna to learn how to design emails for absolute maximum conversions. So go watch this video next.